Hello and welcome to a quick demonstration how to get started with Ectarius Premium. Initially, we just log on to the Ectarius Modeler after we went through the onboarding and have created an account. As you can see, this is using your normal existing Active Directory or Microsoft accounts. So in my case, I will log on here with So here we see now the initial environment where you can manage all your models. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to generically create models. Um, the process is even easier with the connectors in the integration menu or the supported accounting systems. But let's assume in this case here, we're not using one of these systems that we support with Ectarius connectors, but we have to start from scratch. And we do this using the cube wizard, which is the generic tool to build a terrace model. And as you'll see, it is pretty easy and straightforward. We have now different options to connect to the source. Um, this could either be a relational database, it could be Power BI tables, or this could be Excel. For this training, we will use Excel. So we'll just point to a typical data set in this case, an accounting data set that contains GL, general ledger transactions for a group of companies. And this is a typical format as this data, in which this data is stored. So we can see now here the format of this table. So we have uh, the identifier of the company, and then we have a lot of other columns, time periods, um, a wide variety of columns, and then also the, the value of the particular transaction. So this is now a sample of all the transactions in this, in this table. And we're using now this table as the basis for our Ectarius model. So the first name is just to specify a, a cube name or a model name. So we call this finance. And now we just need to specify what our model looks like. And this can now either be dimensions that structure your model. So for example, the company, this could be time periods where Ectarius will automatically create time hierarchies that um, can then be used for time intelligence that contain the time aggregations. We can specify the granularities. Let's say we want to do for our model here, do this on a monthly basis for our forecasting or planning. We want to start at a particular time, let's say we want to start in 2016 and we want to project forward to 2022 and our financial year starts in July. Um, this could be obviously anything. This means it will automatically generate the right aggregations for financial year analysis. The next thing is uh, we have a dimension for the account. We want to analyze by account, so we make the account name the key identifier of our, of our dimension. But then we also want to use attributes like hierarchies or additional information for the accounts dimension. So we want to use this column here, account code as another column in the account dimension, the account name dimension. Um, let's say we also want to use the account class as a hierarchy. We don't need to use these ones anymore because we have already created our time dimension. But then we have here a column that specified what is the type of data. We want to use this as a dimension to store our scenarios. And let's say for the moment we're good with this. The only final thing is to specify the column that contains the value. So this is how easy it is in Actaris to create your model. So you can see now we have a four dimensional model with the dimensions, organization, account, data type or scenario, and then the time period. So we let this now work away. So here we can see now our new model um, called finance. If we have a look at this. We see that it's using the four dimensions, organization, account, data type, and date. Physically, the relational fact table is called uh, cube underscore finance um, underscore WB. If you want to have a quick look at the structure, we can just, for example, take now the data type in the columns and the account name in the rows, and now we see what data is in the queue. 
but we can also edit the model. So for example, if you want to add additional scenarios, at the moment you only have actual, you can just say here, we would like to, in our new model, have additional scenarios. And we call those budget and another one for forecast. So this is it. Um, the next step is now this relational star schema data warehouse, um, either in the cloud, that's the default in Azure SQL, then what Keras automatically generates for you, or in your own SQL Server environment can now be accessed by, by front ends. And the front end options, um, you can see those in the download section. So you can download here the respective Excel add-in that you need. And you can also download the, the different Power BI visuals. So we'll do this for the moment and we have a look at how you can get started with Power BI. So we just download this visual. So now we have the visual, which is a normal custom visual file. And then we switch to Power BI. So now we have our model, we can just connect to it in Power BI. The first thing that we need to do is we need to add the visual. So we just point to the visual that we've downloaded in the download area. This is the matrix. Um, whatever we do works in a very similar fashion with the four other visuals. So with comments, visual planning and table edit, the light visual uh, doesn't require any authentication, so that's even easier. So now we now have our visual there, and then the only thing left is the data source, which is connect to SQL Server. Put in the database name for the cloud that's always Actaris database.windows.net, and then the database is your database name, which always starts with AP. In my case, this is Actaris demo. So then typically for write back purposes, it's better to turn on direct query. So we do this here. And now we can connect to the Actaris database and the model that we've just created. So now this is getting loaded here. Now we see the content of the database. So this could be now a variety of different schemas depending on the sources that uh, you have added. So for example, if you've added zero, you will have all the tables from the zero accounting systems or QuickBooks or Workflow Max or others. And the generic model tables typically start with OLAP. So the only thing we have to do is we have to select our cube, which is the one that is called finance underscore WB, WB for write back. So that's a convention that applies to every cube. So it's always this prefix and this suffix. So to get the related dimension, we can just select the cube and then click on select related tables. And the only other thing that we have to do until Active Directory authentication is supported in the Power BI custom visuals is to add the service account table. So once all those are loaded, this is all we need. So this should be finished any second. So now we can see the cube table and the four dimension tables here. All of them have this all up prefix that, that specifies they are not coming from a from one of the standard connector sources, but our generic model in this case created by the cube wizard. So, and now to get things going, the only thing is we're taking the Icteris visual and now taking the amount and putting it into the values. So we've put the amount in the values and now we can just put the dimensions as we need them. For example, if we want the hierarchy from name to account class, we can do this here. If we want to see a comparison of actual and budget, we can put them in the columns. We can take now the date that we want in the filters, for example, the year month. And then the only thing left is the authentication. Here we have to do a bit of a workaround because at the moment visuals don't support the Active Directory authentication, which Akaris already supports. 
but this should be coming soon. So in the meantime, you have to take from the service account table the key, put it in the key, the name, put it in the principal user, and for the user, um, for the moment, we can either use the user principal name function in, in Power BI. The thing with that one is that will only work in the service. So to demonstrate things in the in the Power BI desktop where we are at the moment, I will just create a hard-coded user. So I will add a measure here now. This measure I will call user. Which I call user and then just half code the username a carries demo at microsoft.com and that's the last entry in the list the current user name so I just put this into the current user and then the only thing left is the cube name, which is finance in our case, and the database name, which is AP Actaris Demo. And that's it. So now we have immediately our planning form. So we can drill down into the detail. We have um, our scenarios here. If we want to show actual end budget, we just have to turn off the zero suppression. Because at the moment, in the matrix by default you have zero suppression so i just will turn this off so here we have now the two empty scenarios the only thing left is we can format this a little bit nicer so let's just make this a nice number format here for example a currency and zero decimals So now I can do my planning. So for example, for expenses, last year we had actuals of 6,300, this year 7,000. And I can just enter my numbers here. Let's say for cleaning, we have minus 500. And we can see now we have a total of 6,500. Now I can do the same thing also on the total level, but I need to turn it on. So to allow the entry on aggregate levels, this needs to be turned on in the uh, grid UI. So we go here to splashing at parent level is turned on. So now we have here our results. And if we now click here, we can say, okay, this we want to change to 7,000, which will increase the underlying values once we hit refresh you get the message here the notification that for the splashing to be visible you need to refresh so we are refreshing here now and now we can see the the value here the table is still refreshing so if we go down now we can see now the distribution of the new value the same thing works with relative changes so if we put an i in front of it that's the relative change after re the refresh that's also immediately applied to the detail level. So this was a short overview of how you can start with the carriers in just a few minutes, build your model, your cubes, your dimensions with the cube wizard, then download the Terris Power BI visual and build your initial data entry, forecasting, planning form, in Excel, all this in less than 10 minutes. For any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact our support team, or if you want to try it out, um, start your trial account in our free onboarding process.